Good evening. The school board meeting of Tuesday, December 14th, 1993 is now called to order. And I think we have, we're going to take a little time to get used to this sound system. It sounds kind of funny. <laughs> the first item on the agenda is adjustments to, it, to the agenda. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Funny? Yes. Um, at the teacher's request, I'm asking you to delete item 8B, uh, leave of absence. Okay. Any other adjustments? Okay, seeing none, the next item on the agenda is approval of school board minutes meeting of November 9th, 1993. Are there, are there any changes? Okay, seeing none, the minutes stand approved. Uh, the next item is comments by the high school representatives. Do we have high school representatives tonight? No? Middle school representatives? Oh, okay. We have a graduate. Hi, I'm um, Sarah Safer. I'm the SAC chairperson this year. Um, I'm here because our school board representative, Matt Wright, couldn't be here tonight, so I'm just speaking for him. Um, I decided to talk more about what the SAC is doing than what's going on in the high school as a whole because it seems like the sports and other things that are going on um, are pretty much in the Cape Cod and people know about that. Um, so I thought I'd let you know a little bit of what's going on inside the SAC. Um, this year, we have three committees um, as we started last year. We have a spirit committee, um, a projects committee, and a policy committee. And the way that this was set up last year um, was just for efficiency. And this year, our spirit committee um, is really working to get people's spirit back up in the high school because most people don't have a whole lot of enthusiasm um, for being in school at all. So what they're working on um, are some projects, like they're thinking, um, of maybe having like class versus class field day, um, having a giant mural in each hallway, um, or maybe having like a school disco dance, just something to get people's morale up. And we recently had a homeroom for SAC just so that we could get information out to the students and um, get some of their input. So they're gonna be looking at um, the comments the students had to see um, what kind of spirit activity they can do. Um, the projects committee is working on, or will be joining our senior service project committee. Um, from last year and hopefully we can keep that going. And the policy committee has been working on constitutional amendments because we have a constitution um, for the SAC that's kind of ignored. So that's been amended and updated. Um, and also just like within the high school, um, the seniors have been working on Secret Santas this week which is something kind of to get our spirit up and I think it's going really well. And we're thinking of putting suggestion boxes um, around the school, like in the faculty room, in some place where students can put suggestions just to keep the communication going. So that's what's going on in the high school right now. Thank you. Any questions or comments? The board? No? Thanks a lot. Middle school representatives? Um, good evening. I'm Stacy Pickering, and this is Amy Fairbanks and Sarah Herbert. Um, they're the seventh grade representatives. Um, Tonight, Nina Hendrickson, our, my other co-worker, um, couldn't be here because she had a band concert, so. Um, to begin, we would like to briefly talk about the two grades that have stood out the most in these past weeks, and that's the sixth and seventh grade. The sixth grade has just finished their gift wrapped um, sale about a month ago, and that's for the Chwanki, um survival experience that, that's going to take place this winter, and that sale was pretty successful. In the seventh grade, um, they're working in their advisor and advisee groups in their survival unit and service projects um, around the community of Cape Elizabeth. Um, Andy's, Mr. Andy Strout is taking his advisory group monthly to the soup kitchen, and Mr. Ken Plummer plans to have a bake sale this Friday to raise money for the needy. The student council recently held a dance, and we're using all the proceeds to um, buy presents for, the, for a needy family. And we selected a needy family that has six children. And this Thursday, December 7th, we're going to um, Toys R Us and we're gonna try to get a lot of the gifts off their wish list to have them have a happy holiday. Um, are there any questions? No questions. I'd commend you on all the service work you're doing. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is communications. Are there any communications? No? OK, 
Okay, moving on to the superintendent's report. The first item is total quality meeting. Right, and again, I must admit this, I feel like I'm echoing, but uh, we'll get used to it, I'm sure. Um, again, this is a, an item I am keeping on the agenda every month. We actually did not have um, the latest round of scheduled meetings, which we should have had last week. Um, but we are having them this week, so I don't really have any additional notes to give you. Uh, however, I think that um, I'm going to move right on to the workshop because I think it does tie into the total quality issue. Um, just for the general information, if anybody happens to be watching this report, uh, we had a board level workshop with, attended by a number of uh, teachers as well as administrators uh, and some parents as well as board members where we discussed uh, the immediate focus was the middle school honor roll, um, just simply trying to understand better what the procedures were and what some of the possible um, ways in which that might be changed. But I had uh, decided to try to use a total quality approach in the sense of organizing not only the uh, immediate problem, but what would be some of the root causes of a problem or what would be some of the other aspects of, of um, Actually, it turned out not just honor roll itself, but also grading in general. I did include my summary notes for that meeting, but since most of you were there, I would also be very happy to have any additions, additional comments or um, thoughts from each of you. I am keeping a record of all of our total quality meetings this year in one way or the other, uh, and do intend to uh, make sure that there is a summary uh, available to not only the board but any interested citizen eventually um, because I think that we are in, at the beginning of a lot of significant changes in the way in which we're organized as a school district. Some of those uh, that we've been talking about are organization and how we actually deliver services. But I think there are deeper changes uh, coming down the pike for schools in general. Um, so. Uh, one other thought I'd like to leave you with, uh, not a decision you have to make tonight, but from time to time I've talked about the possibility of having a total quality um, board, staff, and uh, parent um, group meeting, perhaps uh, a minimum of three or four times a year to look at these kinds of issues and to advise us. I, I really believe that there are some trends here, whether we call it total quality or whether we call it um, various kinds of reorganization that are going to be tied to much of what is going on in our, in our country, whether you call it reinventing government, uh, whatever the issue may be. And I think we're, we're definitely seeing the bigger picture through these processes. So I've actually covered two pieces. Okay. Any comments from the board about the meeting or on Connie's suggestions on where we go from here? I would just like to comment on the meeting and that I thought it was excellent and very well done and I think that if more people understood how much work goes into these uh, preliminary discussions they'd be much happier with the process and the end result and I encourage people to attend. Very well done. Thank you. Any other comments? I, I would just like to say that I think we should uh, obviously continue this discussion, you know, starting with uh, Connie's suggestions that she had um, in here. If people would like to give some thought to, you know, whether we need to change the administrative policy to reflect actual practice, you know, the issue of whether we need to extend the grading numbers, which I would agree with Connie's assessment that we should just leave it the way it is because it's really a non-issue. Um, and looking at the issue of student assessment, I, I think the idea of, um, you know, from the policy perspective, having more student demonstrations and exhibitions is something we can direct the policy committee to talk about at their next meeting, perhaps. But my understanding is we're also waiting for input specifically from the administrators in addressing honor roll, is that correct? And then we'll address that at another time. I, yes, I, th I think that one of the things that we do want to do is make sure since we, were, we started with the focus on middle school and it was middle school um, specifically in that administrative guideline, which uh, from a historical point of view was really, we believe, although it's dated 77, so we're not absolutely certain, 
uh, was a reinstitution of the honor roll at the seventh and eighth grade. And as we noted during the meeting, that the sixth grade participation uh, really came about more as a factor of the of where grades were at a certain time. Fifth grade actually joining Ponco for a few years, therefore being the only grade not on the honor roll, so it kind of got added to the seventh and eighth grade. Um, the degree to which, I guess part of my comment is, the degree to which the board or the policy level wants to discuss uh, any amendments to that honor roll per se, uh, that's a pretty nutsy boltsy statement that we have in our uh, administrative policy. It makes no attempt to sort out some of the underlying issues. Um, and I would be looking for some guidance from that policy subcommittee as to how far you want to amend it. I would also note that um, I talked to Jan Soland, who's now one of the co-presidents of the Middle School Parents Association, and they are very interested in, in holding a meeting specifically for parents to discuss this issue. Obviously, we didn't have a lot of you know, parental um, input at that meeting, um, and so, so that'll be coming up. We should be getting more feedback back from the teachers. I understand they've gotten copies of you know, the, the notes from the meeting and um, we can discuss it at a policy level and maybe come, mm -hmm. come back in some formal way to talk about it again in February, maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully. One of the things that I think, for instance, might be a um, way in which that could work, the sense of the honor roll as the only public recognition of student academic achievement um, could be seen as uh, de-emphasized while some of the other issues that we talked about the other night, the possibility of individual subject achievement or exhibitions and demonstrations rather than simply uh, a cumulative grade average. But we certainly recognize that that is a, um, an emotional issue in some families and, and for some students. We heard, for instance, that in an informal survey as far as the, um, I think it was the sixth grade, if I remember correctly, about something like 88% of the students indicated that they wanted the honor roll just as it was. Uh, since the students weren't there, we don't know exactly why, and it had some speculation. But I, I do think the, the, uh, the comment that I believe you made, uh, Mark, um, and that we used as one of the frameworks for our analysis, that grading um, does not adequately reflect academic ch achievement is a central issue here. And if that is to the degree that that's true, for, for the varying reasons that we were beginning at least to chart out, um, it does uh, certainly, I think, raise the issue that just changing the honor roll without also looking at grading, vagaries of grading uh, for one reason or another, and what we all think the grading system means, uh, it would be certainly be incomplete just to change one piece without at least attempting to assess the other. Rosemary? May I make a comment about that? Uh, it's about a high school issue that um, I just became aware of uh, when I read my parents' forum newsletter that there's a, also been a revision in the grading system at the high school for weighted grades. Could we include that? <coughs> in the discussion. Okay. Because I haven't yeah. seen anything on any of that, and Charlie and I both served on the committee for 18 months that led to the discussion, and there was a change, and I would like to see that okay. in the big scale. I think that's fair. In fact, I've been talking to Connie about um, some way of um, having uh, board members know more about what's going on in all three schools on a day-to-day -day basis and trying to find a way to do that that isn't just doesn't just create more paperwork and memos for the administrators to write but just so we have more of an idea of what's going on so we're working on that but i agree with you rosemary that's a good point ready to move on to senior service project final report yeah, and I think we have some, I know we have staff, David Perry, and uh, our volunteer coordinator, Gail Schmader, um, and we have students here to, it looks like we have, am I seeing a graduate over there? All right, I thought so. Um, uh, we would be happy to have you comment. I think in, in, for starters, I was impressed with the summary uh, that we received for our packet. Um, I found it extremely interesting, thoughtful. Um, and putting that together with the report, of course, from the students, which I think is very moving, the one that at least some of us saw last spring. Um, 
personally, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for the high school to branch out into a variety of service projects. I think your paper does outline some of the problems. There are some practical strategic issues, uh, and I thought you covered them very well. But you're here to explain your point of view, and uh, I don't know who wants to start, I guess, Dave. Yes. Can I just ask you a question? Who, who wrote this um, report? That wasn't clear to me who was the actual author. Was this the I, I authored the, the paper, yes. Right, so I job. take credit or blame or good whatever. Job. Some Sorry. people gave me some help with it. Um, good evening. My name is David Peary. I was the uh, coordinator for the senior service project, the chair, the lead teacher this past year. Um, it was a wonderful experience that afforded 15 high school seniors an opportunity to volunteer within the southern Maine community. And actually, one person was working out of state in Massachusetts. There are many pluses that came as a result of this project. Um, students had a, uh, an opportunity to work in a variety of situations outside of their normal daily um, classroom experience. Uh, we saw a mixing of diverse populations, high school students working with uh, different age groups and working with uh, populations from outside of the school, which is really an excellent experience. It allowed um, the breaking down of stereotypes that people sometimes hold of uh, who is inhabiting a, a certain segment of the society. And it worked in two ways. It helped um, our students to see what life is like outside of Cape Elizabeth. And it also allowed people outside of Cape Elizabeth to see that um, there are some very nice people who are living in this community and who are giving up their time to work in various situations. Um, this experience also allowed them a fair amount of independence which made it for a nice transition from a more controlled, structured high school experience to the um, less structured college experience. Um, many of the students mentioned that this was a culminating experience that allowed them to apply the skills that they had been working on, they had been learning for the past 12 years of their life. And this experience allowed them to see how much they actually knew and how much they had actually learned and what they could actually do outside of the classroom. Um, many of them learn the value of volunteering. I think this community has a wonderful ethic of volunteering as you yourselves here are demonstrating people who give a great amount of their time to serve their community. And there are students who are now in college and who are volunteering their first semester in college in a variety of service organizations off at school, wherever they are. Um, it also allowed them to reflect on what they have having um, lived and having been raised and educated in this community as to what economic and edu educational opportunities are available to them as a result of living in this town. Um, and finally, it was a wonderful link between the school and the community. Um, shortly, I'm going to read a list of all of those who were involved and to give them their proper thanks. And I think you'll see that it went far beyond just staff at the high school. There are many, many people from all walks of life who serve in uh, different uh, capacities. Um, helping us with this program. But before I get to that, um, I'd like to bring forward someone who's going to give us a short testimonial. I'd like to say we flew her in specially for tonight, but uh, she was in the community. She very graciously volunteered um, to speak to you tonight and talk to you about her impressions and what she gained from this experience. Um, so I'd like to introduce now um, Nancy Greenlaw, a graduate of Cape Elizabeth High School uh, in 1993, who's currently in her first semester of college at uh, Hobart William Smith in Geneva, New York. Uh, as Mr. Perry said, my name is Nancy Greenlaw, and I'm now at William Smith College in New York, and I graduated last year. Um, I was a participant and also an organizer for this project, and it was great to see it all come together last year, and I was glad that I got a chance to uh, be in the first group. And I volunteered at the middle school with Mr. Strout and Mrs. Stanford with gym classes. And I learned a lot from the experience, and I found it to be a great one. I learned a lot about myself, which I wasn't really expecting to do. And I learned a lot about volunteering, which I had never really, I had never really volunteered before, so this was a good experience to, for my first time. And uh, by picking sites, we had, to, we had a list of sites that we got to pick from. And just by seeing how many places were on that made me see, and everybody else see, how many opportunities there are for us to volunteer and open our minds a little bit to that and find it a special experience. Mm -hmm. And right now at college, I didn't have a chance in my first term 
because of sports, but I hope to get involved. There are many opportunities there that I've found, and hopefully this can, volunteering can continue later on in my life, too. And this experience taught me how much volunteering means. And after being at college for a term, and now that when I look back, I found that um, doing this project was a, a good transition. As Mr. Perry said, we went from less structure um, than the high school had, and that was good because college is less structured than high school, and it was a good transition to have a little less structure in your life, but still have some. And I just wanted you all to know that I got a lot out of this experience, and I know all the other participants did too, and I think it's a great chance for high school students to volunteer, and I hope it continues in the future. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I was on this committee also um, from the start, and I think that um, I'm in a position now as SAC chairperson. What I've done is I've organized um, our committees on SAC so that this can be handed down. Um, we've gradually expanded our committee. Um, I know that I spoke last year like about just the process we went through. Um, we started off with a very small committee, and it's grown to include um, community members and teachers and students. And what I did with SAC was I was planning on the projects committee sort of taking over the senior service project so that it's something that can be seen through um, year after year. And I've sort of strategically placed um, students who I think would serve the, this um, project well um, and be valuable assets to the committee itself so that this can continue, um, of course, like with your blessing and the faculty. So this is something I really um, hope continues and um, I hope that we can pull it off again this year and that it's something that um, we can gradually integrate into the, like the school. Um, I don't know whether it can ever be um, mandatory, but I think that um, it's definitely really valuable and that as students that we need to work to um, keep it going. Um, as you've learned from the last two speakers, Nancy and Sarah were certainly um, pivotal in helping this uh, program come to, uh, come to life last year. Um, they did a lot of work. They, Sarah was especially outstanding in, in recruiting lots of people to be in this community, which I, this communi um, committee, which helped it to get going. I would like to take your time to run through a list of people who were uh, pivotal in helping this program um, take place last year and to thank them publicly for their participation. Gail Schmader, who is here this evening, uh, very graciously consented to be on the committee last year and gave us a lot of insight, was able to bring back information that she uh, had gathered at various uh, conferences she had been to throughout the year. And certainly without her, I don't think we would have uh, had the wonderful product that we had at the high school. Sally Martin, Betsy Wiley, Paul Jackson, Barbara Cummings were all volunteers for that committee too. From the community, uh, Janet McLaughlin came on and she w offered some wonderful experience to us being not only a parent but someone who was volunteering in the community and community who was very familiar with how volunteer organizations work. Um, we'd like to thank Mr. Leslie and Mr. Greer in absentia tonight because they came on and helped us with supervising uh, students and helping us uh, to supervise the students in the final project phase. Um, other parents who came forward to help with, help with us help us with the supervision of students who went and visited them in their sites and met with them over the two weeks that they were uh, volunteering were Cheryl Higgins, Bucky Johnson, Fran Minden, Bob Greenlaw, Irv Chapel, and Dana Johnson. In uh, training phase, um, Harvey Berman, a uh, community member, and Susan Hornbeck, Hornbeck um, a United Way uh, representative, came forward and did some training for us. And it was an interesting link that here we contribute to United Way every year. And United Way contributed to us last year by sending us their volunteer coordinator to come out and speak to us. Um, the faculty was very supportive of this program last year when we went to them asking their, their permission. Uh, they gave us a 100% approval and sent us on our way. And this year, they are also very approving of our undertaking this activity. Uh, we worked in a variety of organizations within the uh, uh, Southern Maine community. We had people at Sweetser Home and Anna Engel was very helpful there in taking in a student. Um, the Greater Portland Episcopal Partnership and John Strand also received a student. The Refugee Resettlement Center and Stephanie Cox helped us out. Habitat for Humanity took on three students under the, the auspices of Kristen Tyson 
and the Cedars home, uh, Nursing Home. And um, Janet Bellevue uh, took on a student also. Uh, within our own school system, Joe Moore and Andy Strout, Neen Stanford, Linda Hull, Sarah Lewis, Sue Welch, Barbara Powers, and Rita Sidwowski, who is not with us this year, all um, hosted a student working with them in their classrooms. And Deborah Jordan Pearson and Ted DeMille were also very helpful uh, to us um, within the, the very building um, in which we reside. Certainly this couldn't have taken place if Nancy Hutt and Beth Henderson and Nancy St. John had been willing for people to come in and to have been wandering around their quarters. And we'd like to thank them very much for their backing of our program throughout. Um, and finally, uh, Rick DeFusco and Frank Miles, who were behind us and encouraging us all the way, and when we thought, well, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to work, they, they stood behind us and said, it'll work, and we'll make sure it works for you. So we would like to thank them for their support last year, too. Um, we looked at the, how well the program worked, and as I said in the report, we would like to pursue the program again a second year. Um, what we would like to do is to expand it slightly and call it the second year of the pilot. Last year we thought it was the pilot, but we think we still have some kinks to work out. Um, we would like to expand our group to about 25 to 30 students and most likely work along the same lines as we did last year, although we haven't come to a final decision on that. But we're thinking of taking students out of their classes for the last two and a half, three weeks of the school year and having them participate. Um, in this volunteer experience. Some of the things that we're working on, although we had a variety of situations for students to volunteer in um, transportation and other outside school activities limited the type of experiences students were willing to come forward for. Um, so um, it was very nice to have half of our students working in the school system, but we certainly would like to encourage them to get outside of Cape Elizabeth and to try some different experiences too, and perhaps to reach out to a to a, a wider, broad, um, wider, broader spectrum of students who are participating in the program than did last year. And in an effort to be accountable, um, we created a mountain of paperwork and very quickly saw the error of our ways. We like to streamline our paperwork because it was, it was just pushing too many things around. People were confused what they're supposed to do with what. So to streamline that a little bit. In spite of our attempts to be very, very clear with our instructions and what we wanted from who and when we wanted it, um, we found that we weren't. So we'd like to re-examine re our procedures and re-examine how we present things so that we don't have um, confusion, so we don't have anxiety because people aren't sure what they're supposed to be doing. Um, a difficulty that the students had was making up schoolwork and being prepared for exams. We'd like to talk with the faculty as to how we could better facilitate this for the students. Likewise, um, many faculty members felt a real loss in their classes when they saw five or six students leaving suddenly at the end of the course. And what can we do to help them um, when they're losing large chunks of their classroom, um, which obviously detracts from any type of group dynamic or classwork, uh, class discussion that's going to take place. Um, something that did not exist last year was an opportunity for the participants to share with their peers who remained at the high school their experience, and we'd like to somehow try and build that in if we could, so that when they come back brim uh, brimming with enthusiasm and overjoyed with their experience, that they can share that joy with other people and perhaps um, proselytize a little bit, reach out a little bit, and encourage others to be uh, participating in a volunteer uh, experience. Um, our wrap-up. Uh, activities could use to be pared down. We, we budgeted three days last year and saw that was more than enough and to look at how we can um, improve the editing process and look at what we can do to encourage everyone to fulfill their requirements. We don't have to be chasing after them. Um, and finally, there, there's the question last year, the lead teacher did so on a volunteer basis. They're, they're volunteering again this year. But if um, this project is to continue somehow, uh, some compensation should be set up for the lead teacher or any other um, employees in the school system who are committing a sizable amount of time um, to overseeing this project. So these are all issues that we are looking at as we um, come into our second year of the pilot project. But perhaps the most central issue and the a reason that I'm really here for tonight is um, to ask the board what is our direction. This was a, a student or um, student-born project. They wanted to participate in some type of service activity at the end of their senior year. And we were able to organize, I think, a very successful activity last year. 
Um, but we need some overall mission. We need some overall direction. And we're looking for a way for um, this direction to come about. So I'm here tonight asking the school board if they would be willing to oversee a series of workshops, perhaps that much along the, on the lines of the um, uh, ninth, the, excuse me, the middle school uh, honor roll pro, um, workshop, which I heard uh, went, went, came off quite nicely, and perhaps pose this question to them. That is, what is the role in the Cape Elizabeth school system of the, the role of the high school in developing the ethic of volunteering and of giving one service to one's community? How do we develop that? And is, it, is that our role? And if that is our role, how are we going to go about it? Um, we are looking to you to organize a workshop that would include students and teachers and administrators, community members, and board members, so that there can be a, this can be the whole community that's looking at this and get the whole community behind this. Um, such questions that we need to look at are, um, who's going to be involved? Is it a senior project? Is it something we want to put in a different year? Is it juniors? Is it freshmen? Um, when will we do it? At what time of year? Is it going to be an in-school project? Is it an out-of-school project? Do we create re release time as we have done, as we have done in, in the past and as we are thinking of doing this year? How will it be administered? Um, well, how will we uh, recruit teachers to do this? Will we use community members as we so su successfully did um, last year? And, and for what purpose will it be? Will it be for credit? Um, will it be a graduation requirement? When will we start? So those are some questions that we need to have answered. And certainly we don't expect those to be answered tonight. But we would like very much for a community forum to take place where these questions are addressed and discussed so that we can see exactly where does this fit in. Because as it is, it's, it's a very small piece um, that's sort of sitting on the side. And we want to see if it's appropriate to have this integrated into the high school curriculum or somewhere else within the system. We may decide that this is, this is going to blossom and there's going to, we're going to try and encourage this within all the buildings of, of the school system, of the, the volunteer ethic. But how are we going to do that and what's, what's our time frame for doing this? Um, we would appreciate it very much if these workshops could take place so that a recommendation were available to be submitted to the superintendent and the high school principal. Um, by the end of April, so that if this, if indeed this is something we want to have come online next year, that it be available for them to see how to uh, put it into the system this spring, so that next fall we can land with our feet in the ground and be running. If it, if it, we, if we wish for this to take place, if the program we envision is going to start up next year, then it would be paramount that we start on it this year now and have a decision available that we can get working on it in the late spring. So that's all I have to say. Um, do you have any questions? Well, I, I would just like to make one comment. That is thank you, David. You've put an awful lot of time and work in, into this, and I think people should recognize um, your great efforts here. And you've raised a lot of questions for us. Uh, you know, I think uh, um, volunteerism is something that's obviously important to everybody who's sitting up here. Um, I do think we want to encourage the kids, not just you know, in their senior year as a, a, a kind of letting go period, but all through the school. And you raise a good point. We have to discuss how we're going to do that, how we're going to foster it, what framework it's in. But um, while, while we're in the process of doing that, I would encourage you to certainly go ahead. I think it is appropriate to have this as a second year of a pilot because there are some kinks, as you honestly you know, said, to, um, to work out, but it's certainly going in the right direction in, in my mind, and I'd like to hear what other board members had to say. Well, Peter, I'd, like you, to, you I'd like to say one thing quickly here. Is I have never worked with a committee like this. They were outstanding. We would say we need something done, and there were three people saying, I'll mm -hmm. do it. It was a pleasure to meet with them. It really was. This is the most active, involved, aggressive committee I've ever been involved with, and they, were, they, they deserve a lot of a lot of thanks and, and a lot of acknowledgement for what they did because it was a group of, of seven individuals who really pulled their own weight and made this thing um, come to life. And it was, it was a pleasure to work with them. I think the uh, service project is a great idea. I'm glad it had success last year. And I agree with the direction of going to 100% of the, of the senior class with addressing several of the questions uh, that you had mentioned earlier. Now, it was a fairly limited program, as you described. Do you have any um, clear idea in terms of the number of applicants 
that applied last year or the number of you anticipate this year? Or was most of the students interested, about 25, half the class? 19 the class? students expressed initial interest. Um, 16 completed the paperwork of the 16. Um, one was turned down. Um, excuse me, 17 completed the paperwork. One was turned down. 16 were ready to go, and one withdrew from the program as it began. And no indications yet for this year? An informal poll of the seniors in October seemed to indicate about 50% were interested um, when they get the full details. At that point, they were aware that they were responsible, they would be responsible for making up work that they might miss. Um, that is a big stopper. Another big stopper is being away from their classmates, many of whom they've been with for the last 12, 13 years of their lives. The last three weeks of their high school experience, they get very emotional at that time. And um, it was hard for them to be away. It was very hard. So those are, those are um, hurdles to overcome in instituting such a project. Um, I think that we could accommodate 25 to 30 students. Um, we'll see. We would like to have um, informational meetings with them on a more formal basis than we did last year. Last year we just made a handout available to them with all the information. We would like to meet with them and outline for them the program in detail for them what would, what would be required, what would be necessary, what would be available for them so they could um, perhaps weigh the, weigh the possibilities uh, better than they were able to last year. I just wanted to say um, it sounds like a wonderful um, project and certainly support you and all of that and it would be wonderful if it was the sort of culmination of a career of volunteering for children as they got to, the, to be a senior. And it would be, I think, helpful to look at um, teaching children about volunteering really from the beginning and a lot of them see it at Pond Cove and maybe just don't recognize it as parents volunteer a lot and if we could then you know, transfer that up and have the senior project maybe be the, the culmination by doing an intensive two-week volunteer stint would be very um, helpful and meaningful, I think. Any other comments, Rosemary? Oh, I would just like to say very well done and that I know that the students that were involved, many of them have expressed uh, a much keener understanding of what it takes to do something other than be a classroom bound student. I think that's very valuable for them. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I certainly enjoyed my participation in this, uh, although unfortunately uh, I only batted 500 because one of the uh, young people that I was to supervise was the one that withdrew. So, but uh, the one that I did have an involvement with really didn't need a supervisor. I mean, she was so terrific that uh, I felt a little bit like a fifth wheel. This microphone turning on and off as I get nearer and close to it. Uh, but, but I was particularly uh, uh, you know, pleased to do this because I had just finished traveling all over the country for the previous two years on that uh, you know, national commission that I have bored you all with, I think, or referred to. But uh, you know, our mission was to reform student loans. And uh, the concept of national service came in again and again and again, and uh, it was a, a thoroughly bipartisan issue. Uh, it came from educators of all stripes that felt that you could very effectively put together community service with loan repayment. This is obviously just post-secondary uh, education, so this, there's no direct parallel to our school. But to foster the spirit of community spirit was something that I heard educators in, in the barrio in Los Angeles talking about. I heard people talking about it in Chicago, in Miami. Uh, so I think it, uh, it obviously has some validity. And in, in fact, the, the legislation which we proposed uh, did go through with the national service component. Uh, and there was really universal agreement that it was a good thing to do. It's obviously expensive at the, 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 the post-secondary level. But here in this community, I think we can do it very easily. I personally think it ought to be for credit. Uh, I'd like to see it uh, at least a workshop on whether or not it ought to be mandatory. So uh, I'm all for it. I hope we can get on with it. And I you know, congratulate you and all the people that you know, work so hard on it. Well, Good job. You. 
Um, if you need names of people to invite uh, for this, uh, for these workshops, um, we have some people who have already stepped forward and said they would like to be involved in this in the community and within the high school. I could certainly give you a partial list of names of people who would be willing to help this discussion. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Well, we'd certainly like that list, but we would also obviously publicize it so that we could bring in people who might not have been involved. So that would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, now we move on to update on Coalition of Essential Schools activities. Thank you, David and Gail and students. And uh, Randy Ray is here to give you an update on this. I just want to take the opportunity to point out that um, each of the items on my report this night, uh, tonight um, actually relate to some discussions we had uh, a year ago and in some cases two years ago. Uh, we're talking about grading, we're talking about assessment, we're talking about exhibitions, demonstrations, we're talking about the not only community service but that large issue of the ethic of community service, which is one of those interesting dilemmas and sometimes uh, admittedly uh, a topic of of controversy to what degree did the school get involved with these issues, but something that is extremely important for us uh, as a democracy to truly take a stand on and to decide how important it is to the overall educational experience of students. Um, so today we're going to hear about um, the, uh, we, I suppose I should clarify, I have heard Randy and I uh, can speak, pick up on this too, um, as a result of our discussions of a year ago, I know that we have some people in the community who believe that the board took a vote and simply said, we're not joining the coalition. I'd like to remind people that no vote was taken. The board simply tabled the issue as not yet at a point where um, a real vote could be taken. We recognized that we had high school teachers as well as in some cases teachers in, uh, in some of our other schools very interested in continuing the staff development opportunities, the learning opportunities, the assessment um, uh, kind of projects that they're involved with. And I uh, think we should be proud of the fact that we have staff that continue to examine those issues, uh, even though we weren't able to move as quickly as I'm sure some of them wanted us to. So, an update. Good evening. Thank you. you you've done a nice job. Uh, I would suggest that uh, if we were grading, <clears throat> this might be a nice way of saying assessment by demonstration mm. of uh, some of our students and uh, the whole process. But uh, all I was prepared to do tonight is I, I did give you a brief write-up on the fact that uh, five of us did attend uh, the fall forum in Louisville, uh, Kentucky. Uh, you might add it was colder there than it was here. I was looking forward to some nice weather, but it wasn't that nice. But the uh, sessions were interesting, and, and what I also included in the little pack that I gave you uh, were two examples from a larger program, uh, and I'd be happy to share this program with you of all of the different uh, presentations that we've done. But in fact, uh, four of our teachers were invited to present at the uh, conference, uh, and uh, you have the little summary there, and as I mentioned, their presentations using concepts that uh, fit nicely with the Coalition of Essential Schools principles were very well received. Uh, in between, they're presenting twice. Uh, they presented one morning session, one evening, uh, afternoon session, and each of these sessions were three hours. So, um, they then also attended and met with and talked with other people. And uh, as you all know, uh, just the opportunity to meet with people from all over the country to talk education, uh, if you will, or to listen and share ideas is, is uh, very rewarding. Um, some of the things that uh, you, you pick up, you don't intend to, and you just do. But uh, I, I might mention, I think I passed on something to you, Connie, uh, the uh, material on the global calendar from the school, I think, that you and visited, Connors in, in Georgia. And it's just a different way of looking at calendar. And some of those issues that are issues that are being discussed in uh, this area, uh, Yarmouth, I believe, has talked about longer school uh, year or, or a different format for the school year and so forth. Um, I, I really don't have much more to, to, to say except that it is uh, always beneficial to get out and to meet with and to share and uh, I'd be happy to try to answer some questions. I don't pretend to be an expert on uh, all of these things, uh, but uh, if you have some questions, I'd be happy to share. Any questions? 
comments? I would just like to comment. I said it earlier that um, I think board members need to um, be updated more often about the good things that are going on in the buildings and just, you know, what's going on. And, th and this is one example. Um, if board members could be invited to presentations teachers do for other teachers or something, just so we have an idea about, you know, these very good things that, you know, are being presented at these conferences um, that, that we as board members, if we're not in those particular classrooms don't have a chance to see. It would be, it would be helpful to us. So it'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Randy. Okay, the next item is school board subcommittees and reports. The first is finance subcommittee. Peter. Thank you. The uh, finance committee met uh, at 6.30 just before this meeting and we discussed uh, a number of issues, the number seven bus, lunch program, uh, the uh, comments made by the auditors on our procedures, and we discussed uh, tightening those uh, or responding to those observations. Uh, we went over the budget uh, a little bit. As a matter of fact, I would like permission to leave this meeting. I see that uh, Scott is not back yet, and I asked him to stay upstairs and work on uh, some numbers for the uh, executive session that we're going to have. So uh, I think I will leave unless he appears after the policy reading. Uh, but essentially, we're getting ready for, uh, you know, the hard uh, push on next year's budget, and uh, we will be meeting regularly. That's the end of my report for tonight. Okay. Any questions of Peter? Okay. Moving on to the policy subcommittee. Rosemary? Uh, yes, we had our um, subcommittee meeting. Uh, last Wednesday and reviewed several policies. The one that we are bringing back to you will be under uh, unfinished business. And we are not presenting any other policies at this time for first reading. They are all taking additional research and time. Okay. Okay, moving on to school building committee. I'll turn it over to Connie. Uh, in your packets, there was a draft of the um, a charge that uh, uh, Michael McGovern brought to the council meeting last night. Uh, perhaps we're watching the council meeting, as I was, and saw that that was brought up and approved uh, uh, by the council. Uh, frankly, this was an attempt to make sure that we were spelling out the things that Title V requires for school construction projects and just for the information of the board as well as any of the public who may be watching us or following our, our uh, uh, referendum, post-referendum project here. Um, even though it's local funding, it is a Title V project and the rules that pertain to school construction do pertain to the uh, construction of locally funded projects as well. There is a faster timeline available to locally funded projects because uh, state funding does require uh, going through uh, some additional hoops, but at any rate, um, these uh, specific charges, the 10 items that are listed there, for the most part, either included in um, Title V or recommended by the uh, Bureau of General Services, which does oversee school construction. It is still a public building, and so that there are some uh, rules and regulations that pertain. Um, some of you, I think mostly the, during our policy subcommittee meeting of, of uh, last week, had an opportunity to look at this. Um, if there are any questions or clarifications, I'd be happy to make them. But as I said, the council has already approved it, and I'm comfortable that there wasn't any reason for us to delay their process by having the board officially look at it since we meet the day after the council. Our timing is a little, sometimes I can't always get this, but I didn't see any problem, and I assure the council that it, it was fine and was fine with you. So if you have any problem, let me know, but I don't anticipate any. Okay, moving on, the, the uh, planning uh, committee schedule, building committee schedule is really a tight schedule. An awful lot is going on right now. We have had, um, a, we're having site surveys, we're having some test borings, we are uh, definitely the engineers, or as they put it, crawling uh, through our buildings looking for specifics to, um, to make it possible for the level of detail that has to go into construction documents. Um, 
Obviously, we have two school board members uh, involved in this directly, plus uh, uh, Beth Carey has been coming to those meetings also. And, and I just want to remind the public, all of our building committee meetings are public meetings. We do, in fact, uh, make them make sure that they are posted. Uh, we have a couple listed here. Um, one on, uh, as a matter of fact, on next Tuesday, December 21st. Another one on Thursday, January 6th, uh, and there will be others in January. We'll make sure that those dates get posted so that people are aware of them. I think that's the summary. You want perhaps somebody else who was at the meeting would like to add? It's a lot of work. <laughs> that's for sure. I, I would just like to note at this time, since we're talking about this, that our regularly scheduled January school board meeting has been changed. Um, that evening uh, was the only meeting uh, time we could get with the zoning board who has to look at the, at the building plans. Um, it's a very complicated series of meetings that have to take place with various boards at specific times. So the um, January school board meeting is going to be held on, on um, Tuesday, January 18th instead of the second Tuesday. It'll be the third Tuesday. And um, since we will not be able to use the council chambers, we will have to determine another meeting place and we'll make sure that's posted well in advance. Okay, any other comments about the building, Rosemary? No, but I have a comment about your last comment. Yes. Should I ask it now? Uh, because you're moving the meeting to January 18th, yes. are we also moving the finance committee meeting to the 18th? And since the policy subcommittee generally meets the Wednesday before the Tuesday school board meeting to present new information, should we also move the January 5th policy subcommittee meeting to January 12th? And since they're all on the back of the agenda, I thought I'd... I don't, I don't see yes. any need to move the policy committee meeting unless, unless you do. Well, I was thinking um, of the uh, seven-day non-school uh, segment that was in there and the fact that there's a building committee meeting on the uh, 6th, we don't, we don't have to. I was just bringing it closer up. Okay. I don't, I don't see any need to. I, I don't know how you feel about it, Peter. It might be just as No, the, the 18th is now the January school board meeting? Yes. Okay. May I borrow a pencil? I left it upstairs. It probably makes sense unless. Um, and so the finance committee is the same. Be, yeah. Okay. yeah. Just move it to the 18th right. also. Okay. Thank you. All right, so are we all clear on the meetings? Yep. Policy subcommittee meeting will stay on January 5th. Uh, the school board meeting and the finance subcommittee meeting will be on the 18th at a location to be determined. Okay. Okay, the next item is unfinished business, and it's just a policy second reading. Policy of student attendance and truancy. We have had no further updates or uh, suggestions for revision. Uh, it was, of course, reviewed and adopted. Uh, uh, whatever had existed before was reviewed, and this uh, policy amended for in 1989. And I think what's happened is that that must have been a good job because we really don't have any quarrels with that particular policy. And do I hear a motion? Um, I move that we accept um, student attendance and truancy file JE as written. Second. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Zero. Okay. Next item is new business. Uh, the first is notification of annual election of the superintendent for state reports. Connie, would you like to explain this bureaucratic mess? Yeah, I, every year this happens, I always feel like really the state should change its rules. There is some kind of arcane um, policy that exists somewhere in the archives of the State Department, and if you forget about it, you get this printout from the state, so I've given up. All it really says is that each school board is supposed to take a vote in December and then sign a set of papers signifying that they do in fact have a superintendent for the school year uh, currently, um, you know, the, week, the current school year. Uh, 
sometimes you will notice it about this time of year in the newspapers, you will sometimes notice that the boards do use this as a, an opportunity to review school board uh, contracts with superintendents, sometimes adjustments in pay uh, go on. But uh, since I just signed a two-year contract last July 1, uh, we have nothing really to discuss at this point. You evaluate me in May, so uh, it's kind of sort of halfway through. So what this, it, what is required for our records, our minutes, and ultimately for the chair to sign is an, what amounts to an affidavit that, that the Cape Elizabeth School Board does, in fact, have a superintendent for the 93-94 school year. Do I hear a motion? That's right. Um, I would make a motion that we wholeheartedly elect <laughs> Connie Goldman as our superintendent of schools for another year. I second that. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? 6 0. Thank you. Okay, the next item is personnel requests. Yes, I'm very pleased to say that we do, in fact, um, have a, an excellent candidate for our French position. Uh, and a little resume is in your um, packet. You may recall that we had a resignation last uh, month from Mary Ellen Tracy, uh, who has taken a job closer to home. Uh, I therefore am nominating Paige Brown to be the eighth grade French uh, teacher. We are listing that as a one year position because that is our practice when a resignation occurs in the middle of the year. That does not mean that. Um, that Paige would not be a candidate for an ongoing position, but that uh, is, is certainly not to indicate that that's all this could be. It is simply that that is technically what it is for the rest of this year. Um, you can see her background is strong, um, and she has uh, impressed people that have interviewed her and talked with her and very pleased to nominate her. Can, can I just ask a question? Under sure. her experience, um, I assume that should be 1991, not 81? Oh, yes, that's true. Okay. That's true. Sorry about that. Okay, do I hear a motion? I just had another question. So is she employed by two school districts? No, she will be coming. She has already notified South Portland, and she will be coming uh, to join us at, after the Christmas break, the Thank holiday break. Then I will make a motion that we uh, approve the superintendent's nomination for the middle school French teacher, Paige Brown. Second. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Six zero. Madam Chair, I do have a question. Um, last month, the language department came before us about a situation in the Spanish. How has that been resolved? We have. Um, a, a following the charge, you allowed me to go forward, uh, as I understood it, and uh, make some disposition and in talking with um, the department, looking at the funds available and so on, we agreed to try to find a one position, that is one class, somebody available to come in and teach one class of Spanish. Um, we have certainly had difficulty finding Spanish teachers, uh, not only that situation, but we also have the 8th, 10th middle school situation, which I believe at this point is still unresolved. Uh, we have had a couple of inquiries about uh, somebody who might be interested in teaching that one class, but right now there has been no resolution to it. What, what if we don't find a, a teacher, particularly in the uh, middle school situation? Well, that is our but first crisis. The, the other issue is, is, I don't mean to um, not say that there isn't a need at the high school, but obviously we are operating at the high school level. But at the middle school, um, that's a question that's sort of been haunting us. We're, uh, we really do need, and we have frankly contacted everybody we can think of contacting. We have, I know uh, Nancy and I've had a conversation that uh, frankly at the middle school level we have seen or heard from other schools, uh, even those who are, who are advertising in the summer months, um, and for some reason, we are just hitting a drought on um, Spanish teachers. I don't have any, I don't know what we're going to do. But we will have a plan um, to deal with temporary substitution to keep the program going, but clearly dealing with a fully certified teacher and so on and so forth is, is going to be an issue. Any comments, questions? Um, okay, going on, the, uh, you have included in your packet athletic positions um, plus 
I think you have an update on that. We had to make, we did make a co-curricular change, so we added it. You had a sheet mailed out to you or delivered to you. Uh, there's an additional sheet that has the same positions, but also a co-curricular change. So I will simply go down through these and nominate these. Uh, assistant indoor track, part-time, a shared position with Bill Rice, Tracy Weatherby. Middle school indoor track, Therese Lemansky. Middle school indoor track, Scott Hendry. Eighth grade girls basketball, Allison Gagnon. And seventh grade girls basketball, David Allen. Uh, and the co-curricular change is a team leader at third grade, changing from Ogden Williams to Ren Wilkinson. Okay, do I hear a motion, Rosemary? Um, I would move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for the athletic uh, B positions for 1993-94 and the co-curricular change for the third grade team leader. Second. Second. Any discussion? I have a question about the indoor track situation. Maybe the principal can answer this. I understand there hasn't been a big turnout for indoor track. You have no. It's middle school. Middle school. No, I'm talking about the high school. Okay, thank you. Okay, all in favor? Six zero. Thank you. Okay. Oh, it's eight thirty. Boy. Well, we have an executive session. Um, I would entertain a motion to consider a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. So, <laughs> second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Six zero. 